Welcome to the old Lumens channel again. Um, <clears throat> I've done a video on this before of adding chips um, to uh, drivers, but I'm going to try to show a little more detail, hopefully, and talk a little more about it. Uh, this is, is one of the uh, 7135 linear drivers, uh, and this is a, a, a four four chip driver 1.4 amp um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a chip to on top of one of these to increase the amp draw okay um, I have some spare chips uh, this is the way they come in a roll okay I have a single chip here and uh, <laughs> it's very daunting to, to try to play with these because they're so tiny and it can be really hard for a lot of people uh, it was always very hard for me I guess I've just gotten used to it over time um, there's a couple things that I, that I uh, use in, in particular that seem to work for me um, but first of all I'll, I'll cover everything that I have I have uh, a radio shack and it's just 6040 rosin core, 032 diameter. Okay, uh, and I, I I broke out the uh, the old soldering gun, the old soldering unit, because um, I just I just want to show that uh, you know you don't have to have a fancy unit to do it. That that is a pencil tip, and it's in fairly good shape, but it's a it's a little bit blunt. It's not super pointed. Um, and according to my soldering iron controller, it reads, or it shows that it's set at about 420 C for a temperature. It's just a dial. It doesn't have an indicator. Um, I have a pair of, of needle nose pliers. These are Toolsmith needle nose pliers. Uh, they're, they're plain jaw, okay, and very fine needle nose pliers. And the one thing that really sets it apart and, and makes uh, makes this work like a champ for me is this pair of hemostats okay uh, you can get the hemostats on eBay or in a lot of places online if you know anybody in the medical industry a doctor a nurse it's a friend you probably get a pair for nothing uh, this pair has jaws and I think you can see right there it's got little jaws on it okay and when it closes down it doesn't close down uh, uh, just you know right tight it has an opening in it which works fantastic for these drivers okay um, the uh, the hemostats lock in place okay so you don't have to hold them once you put get them in place <clears throat> and what I do with a driver or what I do with a, a chip is I take I take sure I do see what happens I take one of these 7135 chips and uh, throw it on the ground because they're so tiny you can't hang on to them I'm gonna go ahead and get a hold of it first and then I'll show you I've, I've got the driver or the chip uh, in the pliers so that just the pins are sticking out through the jaws of the pliers and then I take my thumb I just hold that tight and I, and I put my finger behind it okay I got my finger on the back side and I just take my thumbnail and I pull down on one pin at a time or one leg at a time if you want to call them legs uh, and that's how I get them down flat okay I've just used my thumbnail to pull them down flat now there's a lot of other ways to do it I'm sure but that works pretty good for me okay then um, I'm gonna pause for a second okay then I'm gonna take some rosin core flux all right and this is a fairly old container and it's pretty sticky and tacky and <laughs> gooey and, and it works wonderful it doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter I know it you know it should be fresh but 
Um, it doesn't matter which chip you start with or which chip you know which chip you add to. It doesn't matter. I, you know, if if you had an eight uh, an eight chip driver, you could put it on the other side. It really doesn't matter where you start. Um, I guess I'll uh, I'll take one right here, and I'm gonna I'm just going to take and and rub uh, um, some flux over top of those pins. And I'm 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 sort of messy. I don't worry about whether it goes anywhere else or not. I just get it all over them pins. Okay. And I'm going to take a little more flux, and I'm going to put it on the pins on the one that I'm going to set on there. Okay. So I'm going to take that little jewel. And see, so here we go again. There it is. I'm trying to do this with my right hand, and I always do it left handed, so this is a, a problem. But uh, I'm going to just rub some flux again on there, on those pins. Okay. All right, so I got plenty of flux on everything. That's uh, one of the biggest keys to flowing solder is to, to flux everything and to make sure the parts are clean, which they are, they're all new. Um, my soldering gun should be about ready by now. Um, I'll take the driver and I'll take the uh, spare chip or the extra chip and I'll get it set on the driver and try to get it so it's aligned with the other pins below it or beneath it. And then I'm going to take this set of hemostats and I'm going to go and clamp it down just like that. You heard the snap. Now I've, I've clamped that driver or that uh, chip onto the driver and you can see I'm, I'm just I'm nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Then what I do is I go to my vise and I put the hemostats right in the vise. Um, and I've put the driver in there on an angle where I can see. So hang on just a minute here. Okay, I've, I've put the, <clears throat> the driver, the hemostats, in an angle where when I go to solder, I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I can see with a gun what I'm doing, the soldering iron. Um, and I'll clean my tip off just by wiping. I wipe it down on a paper towel. That's what I use. I, I know a lot of people use the, uh, the the sponge and water. I just use a paper towel. And then I'm going to take that solder and I'm just going to get a dab on it. Okay. You see how little solder that is. That's a, that might even be too much. But I'm going to get a dab of solder on there. Okay, and I want it as close to the end of that tip as I can. And then I'm going to turn it around, get it down here where uh, I'm, that, that solder is facing on that pin. And you can see how bad I shake. I'm even on a vise or a support and I'm still shaking. So you know anybody else can do this if I can. I get down there and I heat and I let that flow down. to the bottom okay the the idea is that you want to get the heat down to the very bottom okay I look at that at that pin right there you want to get the heat down at the very bottom and then draw it up okay if you don't get it down at the very bottom where the joint is, then the joint's not going to be good. So you start heating down at the very bottom, and then you roll it over a little bit and let it heat the pin and then draw up. That's how, that's how it works. I'm, I'll do it again in another pin here. I got a little bit of solder on there. Okay. And I'm going to go down to the very bottom and try to heat. and then pull up and if it doesn't work you do it again until you're satisfied with it okay 
and do the same on the third one. Okay. And take this out and hopefully you'll be able to see this. If I can, I'm, I'm looking in the thing trying to get the right angle for you. Hopefully you'll be able to see that that I have a bead of solder on each one of those now and it's been drawn up the pin so I've got the solder down at the very bottom at the the chip that's underneath got it down there then heated and drew for, drew up to pull that solder up with it so I got a good joint now okay that that's uh, that, that's that's basically it right there so in summary <clears throat> I use a pair of needle nose pliers and hold on to the chip and bend the pins with my thumbnail. You don't have to do it that way. You can you can lay it on a on a edge of a table and roll them, but I found it's a lot easier to do it with my thumbnail. I can see what's going on and feel what's going on. The second thing is and the biggest thing for me is is being able to hold that chip tightly when you solder and that's why the hemostats. They just work fantastic. Like I say, I just I just take and get the chip in there where I want it, take the hemostats, snap just like that, and it's tight. Okay? It's not going anywhere. It's going to stay right where it is. Put the hemostats in a vise. Make sure you have a good hot soldering iron. And hopefully you have a pencil tip. All right? And use just a tiny bit of solder. You don't need a lot. And if you use more than just one little, basically one drop of solder, you run the risk of running solder across two pins at the same time. Just a drop of solder on each pin is on each leg is all is all that's necessary. I know other guys don't solder all three legs. I always solder all three legs. Uh, I have even soldered the back tabs, but I don't feel that it's necessary. I've done a lot of drivers. I've never had one overheat yet, so I don't. I really don't don't worry about the back tabs. Okay, I just solder the three legs and that's it um, that's all I got to say if, if you take a little time to uh, to you know try it and as long as you can hold your work tight it, it shouldn't be that bad like I said I, I shake you know I mean if, if I uh, if I were to try to hold that soldering iron without a support you know I mean it, it moves around I can't I can't stop from moving around you know uh, it's the way it goes but I can still manage to solder it Anyhow, that's, uh, that's uh, probably enough hot air out of me. Uh, thanks for watching.